I went to the park this afternoon. I thought it was going to be a fun experience. I really did. But going out with an independent three-year-old is never a fun experience. Go off the path, he said. We went off the path, into the wet grass and mud. The mile-long trail surrounds a wide, open field that extends forever. It's beautiful to look at, not so fun to actually walk in. Come on, let's get back to the path, I said, gesturing. Of course, he turned the other direction and ran further into the field. Hey, come back here, now. I sprinted after him. My feet sank into the mud with a gross squelch. I could feel the water seeping into my boots, cold and damp. I finally caught up with him, panting. I grabbed him by the shoulder. We have to go back to the path, okay? No. I sighed and looked around. We were further out than I thought. Green grass extended in every direction, gently sloping into hills and curves. A few trees spotted the landscape. The sky above was gray. Rain drizzled down, blurring the trail that looped around us. Well, shit. This was going to be a long, muddy, messy walk. Come on, I said, pulling him by the arm. We walked for a few minutes, then he abruptly stopped, bent over, and started taking off his left shoe. No, 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 you have to keep those on. I bent over, grabbed the shoe, shook it out for rocks, and jammed it back onto his foot. Sighing, I stood up. Huh? What? The trail looked further away. No, no. It must be my imagination. I took his hand and we trudged forward. He made it difficult. He kept turning around, looking back over his shoulder at something. I kept my focus, as we mothers are so good at doing. When everything is going to shit, we just stare straight ahead, plowing forward. I kept my eyes locked on the blurry red dot of our car. That looks so far away. What's that? He finally asked me. We're going to the car. I replied sternly, as if I could magically transport us there with my words. Is that a person? He twisted his whole body around, looking at something behind us. I kept my hand locked fast in his, trudging forward. My ears were freezing. My feet were wet. I couldn't lose focus. We're going to the car, I repeated myself through gritted teeth. Is that a person? In the tree? Come on, we're going to the car. What's he doing? We're going to the... His little hand fell away from mine, a soft thud on the grass. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. He slipped in the grass and was sitting now, staring behind us. Huh, perhaps I'd been too mean, pulling him forward like that. He was so preoccupied with whatever he was looking at that he wasn't looking where he was going. I gently pulled him back up. I'm sorry, I just think we need to get to the car now. It's getting cold out. We forgot your hat and I don't want your ears to start to hurt. And I looked up. My breath caught in my throat. There was a figure, hanging by a rope on the tree behind us, limply swaying in the wind. What the hell? Every muscle in my body froze. For a second, I was paralyzed, just staring. The figure hung limply, dark in the shadows of the branches, unmoving. It can't be real. Yeah, of course. How would a dead body just be hanging there, in daylight, for the world to see? There'd been a few joggers on the trail. Clearly, they would have seen it and called the cops. 
and in the drizzling rain, at this distance, I couldn't see any details. It was most likely some stupid prank, or a belated Halloween decoration. What's the person doing? My son continued staring at the figure. Don't, don't worry. It's just some stupid joke. I took his shoulders and turned him around, grabbed his hand, marched forward, without looking back. The wind whipped towards us, spraying rain in our faces. I squinted, fighting though, my toes ice cold and numb. I forced my eyes on the parking lot, focused on that little red dot in the distance. But the dot grew no closer. We walked for five minutes, then ten, then twenty. Every step we took, the path was still so far away. Finally, we stopped. I glanced around, in every direction. We were still in the middle of the field. The tree was far behind us. I could barely make out the figure hanging from its branches. But the path was still as far as it ever was. How was that even possible? I glanced around hopelessly, trying to figure out which part of the path was the closest, which direction to go in. But it seemed like we were in the dead center of the field. I want to go home, my son said, wrapping his arms around me. Fear panged in my chest. I knelt to his level and hugged him. I know. I want to go home too. We just need to walk a little longer, okay? I continued walking. When he got too tired, I carried him in my arms. We walked for a half hour, then an hour. The trail stayed out of reach. I finally collapsed in the wet grass, giving up all hope. Then I saw a jogger. He was in the distance, plodding along the path slowly, wearing a bright red windbreaker. I watched his path along the gravel trail. Then I screamed, Help! Please help us! He was far, but definitely not far enough away to hear someone screaming at the top of their lungs. Yet, he didn't turn around, just kept jogging along the path. The path that never seemed to get any closer. Help us! I screamed. We can't get out. Please, come help us. He just kept going. It's getting dark now. We've been trapped here, in the middle of the park, for almost six hours. I'm scared and hungry. So is my son. We're huddled under a little cluster of trees, trying to stay warm. I've tried calling every emergency line from my phone, but I only get static. I'm not even sure this post will go through, but I'm hoping something happens soon, because I hear noises, horrible noises. The wind coasts through the park, but in its wake, I hear whispers and snarls among the rustling of the leaves, as if the park is coming alive. And that jogger, I'm not so sure he's just some random person, because he's still here, running the loop around us for hours, never slowing down, never stopping for a break, and he's much closer than he was hours ago. I think he's gone off the path. I can't see him in the darkness, but I can hear him, hear his ragged breaths. Hear his footsteps on the wet grass, getting closer with every step. <laughs>